You want to support Roller Martin Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real. It's Roller Martin Unfiltered. By going to rollermartinunfiltered.com, you can make this possible. Okay, folks, take a look at this graphic. When it comes to who should lead the country, you can see that young people and baby boomers are sharply divided. Only 10% of people between 18 and 34 support, support Joe Biden, while 39% of voters between 50 and 64 think he's the best choice. That number rises to 46% for voters over 65. Elizabeth Warren's numbers are constant pretty much across age groups, about 25%. Um, regardless of age, Bernie Sanders gets 33% of the youth vote, but only 3% of the boomer vote. So this is fascinating. We are looking at uh, intergenerational tension around these choices. Uh, Greg, you know, uh, I am puzzled by us, black folks, that is, in terms of our support for Biden. What's the, is, it, is it just because of the Obama loyalty? Of course it is. I mean, I think we're as naive about Joe Biden as we were about Barack Obama. Mm -hmm. We're brand loyal. Mm -hmm. We're not paying much attention to anything. Mm -hmm. And God bless the folks who are going to pull a lever for Joe Biden because they remind him of Obama. That's the wrong thing to pull it. I think the, 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 really the story in that poll is what you said. It's the consistency of Elizabeth Warren. Mm -hmm. She has momentum. She is building a campaign. And anytime you see her have a quarter to vote across all demographics, that means that as people begin to hear her, they are warming to her. And that means that message is resonating all the way through. I just really don't see a scenario where she, she doesn't catch Joe Biden at some point. I mean, I don't know. We don't know. It's still far out. Well, she seems to be on her way, though. And I'm, I'll tell you, I saw her on Saturday night at Congressional Black Caucus. She was sitting with Reverend Jackson and Maxine Waters. See. Uh, you, I mean, you can't, <laughs> you can't do any better than that. I mean, Reverend has not endorsed anybody. But she's sitting right there with mm -hmm. Rev and, uh, and Maxine. Camel left early. Uh, just saying. Um, <laughs> no shade, just saying. <laughs> Honey, what do you think? You're the youngin' on the panel. Yeah, I, Tell me what young people are thinking. I don't know any young person who's excited about Joe Biden. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just don't know. I haven't seen it. To me, I don't think he resonates. And if you're, you know, he talks about a record player, what's that? And the thing that I... Y'all don't even know record players. Yeah, I'm, I'm, like, yeah, I'm like... Who has yeah, a record player? Yeah, I'm like, who has a record player? He just is not, and he's not actually going and wanting to get the young vote as well because he's relying on, you know, the boomer. But younger but, people don't tend to vote, are less yeah, likely in, to vote in, than in, boomers are. Yeah, in, like, the primaries, like, of course. But I feel like if you... But we're the future. So you have to right. try mm. to try to get our votes. Mm. Right. So I, I'm just not sure what is driving people to want to vote for Joe Biden. Mm. And I think the best thing that he could have done is just sailed off into the sunset mm. when with Barack Obama, because then he was mm. like America's favorite uncle. You know, <laughs> that was Joe, Joe, Uncle Joe. Now it's like now we know his history. Like we're looking <laughs> more into his his this. life, and then and he says really incredible. Th w the last uh, debate, he said something in regards to um, uh, going into uh, African American homes and teaching uh, yeah. uh, uh, how to was, be, yeah. how to be how how to be uh, parents and stuff yeah. like that. As that if, was really uh, that like, that was tone deaf. Yeah, it was very it tone deaf. I don't know who his advisors are and. Uh, I'm sure he has. Well, Simone some, Sanders no, yeah, works for him. Simone, yeah, she, she, and, and she's probably pulling her short natural, pulling pieces out of her head <laughs> as he yeah. was talking, because it revealed who he is. It, it, it's, it's, he's revealing himself. That's exactly right. In a lot, and I think that's good for us as black voters, because we need to that's know. That's very good. It's very good for us, so then we mm -hmm. figure out, you know, who can we, who should we vote for? Okay, are you for us, are you not for us? Because they, people want our votes. They really want the, our the, votes. Well, we, we're the backbone of the yes. Democratic Party. Can we see the graphic again, please? Mm -hmm. I'd like to see the graphic again, because we want to look down at folks like, uh, you know, I can't see y'all, but, uh, Kamala, uh, not doing so well and doing much less well with the older people, but still not doing very well. Uh, Buttigieg uh, doing better than she is, which I find interesting. Um, but, uh, Erica, so you're looking at the graphic, yeah. which tells an interesting story, not only about Biden, but about some of the others. What would you say about what's up with Bernie? Um, so, Bernie has a strong um, constituency and following, uh, so to speak. So, I don't see that that number's going to change much, even going into the primary. Mm. I, I would like to fall back on um, what Hani said when she said, we are the future, that age 18 to 34 category. Uh, Dr. Avis Jones, the Weaver, and Melanie Campbell of the Black Women's Roundtable were on AM Joy a couple of weeks ago breaking out and talking about this Essence poll that it just yes. been released. And so when we look at the 18 to 34-year-old 18 to 34-year-old bracket, 
they 26.9 percent of that body of voters were undecided. Yes. 26. That was, that was that was the significant. That was the most significant Absolutely. finding in that essence poll. Yes. And so many people had not made up their minds. They're waiting to see what happens. They're waiting for the fallout. Sure. And so it's still very early. Um, so you know, name ID recognition. But I do believe that Joe Biden just does not have the staying power. I don't believe that we'll continue to see the numbers that we continue to see. But for everyone else that we're looking at, the Elizabeth Warrens, the Kamala Harris's, um, for those people to still continue to look at them, but also for the 18 to 34 year olds that the Democratic Party needs to aggressively begin to court those voters. That's right. Because you don't only want them to turn out, you want them to turn out and bring folk along with them. That's right. And that's, a, that's the real dilemma with the 18 to 34s in particular. You first of all got to get them motivated enough to register. And then once they've registered, you've got to get them out. And what we saw in 2016 is that the 18 to 34s were like, eh. They weren't... I, I had a young lady who told me she didn't like Hillary. I said, well, she ain't coming to your house. So you, <laughs> you really don't have to like her. You don't have to oh. serve her tea. But, you know, so, and then the little girl had the nerve to call me uh, months later, or years later, a couple years later, when uh, Kavanaugh was appointed mm. to the Supreme Court. She said, Doc, what are we going to do about our abortion rights? I said, I'm over 60. I don't have abortion rights. Oh, I said, see, you should have thought about that when you said you didn't like Hillary. Mm. But, you know, the 18 to 34s, they're very picky. And because we had Obama who many people were in love with. Mm -hmm. But you don't get to be in love with everybody no. who's on a ballot. No. I mean, most of us have made pragmatic decisions um, around voting. Yeah. But, honey, you're, you're our, our, you're our young'un, so we're going to come back to you. What must we do to get the 18 to 34s out? I, I think it's all of... It has to be the policies, what gravitates towards the young people, mm -hmm. like student debt, mm -hmm. um, all of those. And I think that's why people are engaged more with, like, Elizabeth Warren, because she speaks to the people. She's she she's trying to figure. She understands like there's a lot of debt that uh, that um, people yeah. my age have, and how yeah. can the debt be relieved? Mm -hmm. So she's really pointing to those kinds of issues, um, and and I think that also you know I think people don't think she's electable, but I think she has a lot of charisma, and I think people are interested in Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And they're all people want to hear the truth. They don't want to hear like oh or maybe we'll figure it out or we can do it. But they want to know, no, these are the things. And she says, I have a plan for this, this, and this, and this. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what is really important. What plans do you have, and how could it help us? Yeah. You know, a lot of people think she's unelectable because people don't think that a woman is ready. But I think that after Hillary, there was significant disappointment on the part of especially white women that... Um, but although they didn't vote, you know, her natural base should have been college-educated white women, and they only voted for her at... 53 percent, mm -hmm. which should have been 60 or even 65. But I think because there's this notion of um, women feeling done wrong, not only because of Hillary, but also because of that thing which is in the White House, sure. that they may well um, come out for Elizabeth Warren. Mm -hmm. She also is a much more likable, That's right. if yeah. you will, That's than right. Hillary is. Are we ready for a woman, Erica? Oh, absolutely. Because, I mean, you know, we can all think about just our experiences having had mothers growing up. And I'm saying this to, to kind of, like, break it out. When you think about the importance of what women do globally, why would not a woman in the United States be ready to lead? And so, for me, when we talk about things like electability and likability, you know, when I was going through kind of, like, different boot camps and to, um, different type of political trainings, that was always something that was very much so highlighted, especially for women. But to me, that playbook has been thrown out of the window. It is all about what are we going to do to save our democracy. And so the person that is best qualified is the person that needs to have that job. Yeah. But, Greg, white men. You know, white men are steeped in patriarchy, sure. steeped in superiority. Absolutely. What does Elizabeth Warren or another woman like Kamala or even Amy uh, Klobuchar, what does a woman have to do to get uh, Bubba, the white boy... Uh, uh... I think ignore them. Yes. White men are dying. Yep. Uh, the white birth rate is, is declining in this country. I think if Joe Biden is nominated, the Democrats are playing with fire. They haven't insured a Trump second term, yeah. but he will have to put somebody on the bottom of that ticket, to, to your point, to excite those young people and to excite everybody else. So that looks like, I think, 
If Biden is nominated, I think Biden-Harris would probably be the centrist right element of the DNC. They would want to see Kamala Harris at the bottom, because what you're signaling is she's going to be the president after me. Maybe I'll do one turn. That might be enough to do turnout. I think that Hillary Clinton, we'll never forget, we know, of course, she won the popular vote, mm -hmm. and, and the three states that turned the election were stolen by less than 200,000 votes, and we're talking about voter less suppression in Milwaukee. Less than 100,000 votes. Less than 100,000 in, in Milwaukee, in Detroit, and in places like Philadelphia and other places. That's how they stole Pennsylvania, Wisconsin. So it's not like she didn't win. I think that it was close enough for them to steal, not because she was a woman, but to your point, she was Clinton. She's mm -hmm. known quantity. I think Elizabeth Warren and Democrats, what they have to do to win is nominate somebody that excites. If Joe Biden is nominated, for example, and puts uh, Stacey Abrams, and she accepts, on the bottom of that ticket, I think he might have a chance. But if Elizabeth Warren is the nominee, I think she picks Cory Booker. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, I think a Warren-Booker ticket will destroy Donald Trump. And it won't be because people won't vote for a black or won't vote for a woman. It's because, as you say, Eric, people are tired of oh, this yeah. BS. And that woman is an academic. Mm -hmm. She is an administrator. And she has been a senator. And I think I think Warren Book it, Booker destroys Trump and whoever he That's a really in interesting... Thing. I haven't thought about that combination. You know, one of the other things we talk about, Hillary and the suppressed vote, Tim Kaine was a very oh. uninspiring choice no for question. VP. No I mean, I mean, <laughs> yes. he had. I mean, he's a nice guy and yeah. he's good on policy, but no redeeming social value no. as a vice yeah. president whatsoever. No. Yeah. There were so many other options she had. She could have picked a Latino. She could have picked Julian Castro. She yeah, president. It, yeah. Yes, and I and I think she was just like, okay, I I need. Um, uh, uh, a vice president, a, a vice president candidate, and it's like, okay, well, he speaks Spanish, so I'll just. Oh, that, please, that's I'll just, exactly right. It, that's what it seemed like yeah. to me. It's yeah. like you but, could have had someone. So, but actual, you have someone who but, really speaks but Spanish. He, but I don't. I don't even think um, um, Castro <laughs> actually speaks, speaks Spanish. Spanish. Yeah. He doesn't. No, he because actually he doesn't. He, he, mm -mm. Yeah, no, so that's probably doesn't. also an issue. Right. Yeah. I just think you know it's interesting because there's that war in the Democratic Party is still there. They're still chasing those phantom voters. Yeah. Those guys are not coming back. If only white men had been voting the last 30 years, we wouldn't have had a Democratic president. We know that. Yeah. It's time now to let them go into that good night that they are fighting to stay in this <laughs> you, you, I mean, the you saw today that yeah. clown was uh, going after uh, uh, Al Sharpton on Capitol Hill, and they were talking about police mm -hmm. brutality. And I look at somebody like Val Demings out of Florida. The future of this country mm. is non-white and is female. So stop mm -hmm. chasing those coal miners. They will come around, or they won't, but they don't well, turn the, coal the election. Miners, the coal but, miners are getting theirs. Hillary said, yes. that, Hillary said that, the, I mean, she said it indelicately, um, but she did say that this industry is, is failing. And, and we will train you to get another job. And, 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 and 45 said, oh, no, I got your back. Well, what kind of back does he have? The, the coal miners have not gotten their jobs back. In mm -hmm. fact, they're worse off than they were. Um, so many people who he made promises to are worse off yes. than they Farmers. were. Yeah. yeah. But let's go back to this generational thing because it intrigues me. I guess as a baby boomer, I'm, I'm very intrigued by just the, our differences mm -hmm. uh, in terms of, of, of this ticket. The younger people on the ticket, Buttigieg, Kamala, Booker, do not seem to be getting traction with the younger people either. Mm. Um, when you look at the chart, we're not going to pull it back up again. They're going to be tired of me in the control room. But when you look at the chart, well, we, we don't see them. We would expect... I would expect... For example, Buttigieg to do better than Bernie, oh, but he's not. Thank you. But look, look at that. So Bernie um, is doing very well um, among younger people. Buttigieg not as well. And he's, you know, people keep talking about him as the possible future. Mm -hmm. I've actually, I initially said that, and he ain't ready for prime time. But he, but he's a good he's guy, and some of his <laughs> stuff has been good. His stuff about race is actually quite decent. Uh, Henny, why are young people not gravitating toward these? But that, but, but now they like uh, Andrew uh, Yang, who is I find fascinating. Uh. I think uh, you know Bernie speaks to the people, and he speaks mm -hmm. to young people, and he speaks to the hearts and minds of young people. And I don't think other ones are 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 interested in that. I think they're just about you know. I th uh, Pete is just more about he has these like policies and he talks about them and he's very eloquent but he's not he's not there's not a lot of spark that comes with him when i when i hear him i'm not like oh okay i'm going to i'm going <laughs> to i'm going to vote for him right. it's like yeah he has a, he has a lot of accomplishments but i don't think his point of view is just like i just want to get the young voters and i'm trying to engage them as well i think he's just trying to engage anyone that he possibly can to get votes but i think bernie is like i understand you i even though he's much older but he's like, I've been there. I understand what what's really important to you. So he's speaking to the hearts and minds of young people, and that is why 
his He's numbers doing are so well with young people. Yeah. All right, folks, back to that roadblock unfiltered video in just one moment. That's my homeboy there, uh, Gerald Albright, one of the folks performing at the Life Lux Jazz Experience in Cabo, November 7th through 11th. I'm going to be there as well. Weekend-long event held at the Omnia Day Club in Los Cabos, nestled on the Sea of Cortez in Los Cabos, Mexico. Folks, it's going to be an amazing time over those four days. We're going to have lots of great food and drink and golf and spa, health and wellness, you name it. The second annual Life Lux Jazz Experience. Of course, some great people, entertainers are going to be there. Comedian Mark Curry, Gerald Albright, Alex Bunyan, Raul Madon, Incognito, Pieces of a Dream, Kirk Whalem, Average White Band, Donnie McClurkin, Shalea, Roy Ayers, Tom Brown, Ronnie Laws, and Ernest Quarles. I'll be broadcasting Roller Martin Unfiltered for that Thursday and Friday there as well. And so we want you to be in the house. It's going to be a great time. Uh, go to lifeluxjazz.com, L-I-F-E-L-U-X-E-J-A-Z-Z.com for more information. Packages are going fast. You also want to book it soon so your airline tickets are not crazy high. So go to lifeluxjazz.com. Now back to your Roland Martin Unfiltered video.